In today's video on Q&A Mondays, we're gonna talk about metal trim for flat roofing, what that entails with installation, testing, and other considerations. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel, welcome to Q&A Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett, and make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday, and today I have Adam and Jeff from the Sheffield Metals crew, thanks guys for being here. Uh, we're talking about flat roofing and how metal uh, is used in a flat roofing scenario. Yeah. Um, there's a couple different ways that we see that, so that's our, my first question for you. What do you see metal being used for in a flat roof scenario? You know, one of the interesting things is, is metal is used in almost all types of roofing, whether it's trims and flashings, things like that. It's oftentimes concealed, but when it comes to a flat roof, often you'll have in the field the flat roofing system, and that can be any number of systems, EPDM, TPO, PVC, so on and so forth. There's a handful of options, and the technology over the years has improved and increased, uh, but one thing that has remained relatively consistent is the use of metal, mostly on the perimeter and edges, and you'll see it with uh, some, some of the penetrations in a roof and things like that to flash around what we would otherwise call a curb. Um, but by and large, it's considered a flashing type item uh, for a flat roof. Uh, Jeff, can you tell me a little bit about some materials and paint that you see used uh, for that trim on a flat roof? Yeah, so the material is going to be specified usually, you know, by whoever's you know designing the building. But it's usually anywhere between 26 gauge and 22 gauge metal. Uh, they do use both paint systems, whether it's you know the SMP paint systems or uh, the Kynar finished paint systems. Uh, sometimes I would imagine they'd go with the lesser paint system if it's going to be covered up uh, by the flat roofing itself. But a lot of flat roofs have uh, coping caps or parapet walls with coping caps on top of them. In those areas, you might want to use a better paint system just because it's, obviously it's going to be very visible. It's not going to be covered up by anything. It's almost like a decorative piece. So using a, you know, a PVDF paint uh, system in those areas you know, could be beneficial for long term. What are some other materials that we see used with uh, flat roofing? You know, the, the metal you see, the PVDF coated metal that we're typically selling for a flat roof, that's just really what you can see from the ground. Um, typically a membrane type system, you know, like I mentioned, TPO, PVC, EPDM, those will also have uh, other metals that are called clad metals. That, that system can be heat welded directly to that clad metal you can't intermix them. It's got to be a TPO clad metal or a PVC clad metal, so on and so forth. And that really is the metal that is keeping the system uh, truly weather tight um, on the edges. And really what you're seeing from the ground, that colored metal, is really architectural. And so when you're talking about architectural appeal, you know, you have your choices, you got rigid systems. But that, that architectural piece is also making sure that that edge stays down and performs in uplift scenarios um, while the, the clad metal and the membrane system are what's keeping it weather tight. So you buy that as a piece, right? Do you buy it from the same manufacturer as making that makes your flat roof? Yeah, typically you're going to get that, that clad metal with your membrane product okay, as well. Okay, gotcha. Let's talk about testing for uh, metal used in uh, flat roofing. Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the big test that's uh, available now for edge metal systems is called ES1. It's an ANSI test, and it's basically a pass or fail test where they take and you have your detail or your profile of what it is that you're uh, looking to get tested, uh, and they basically see how much pressure it's going to take for it to come apart. Different systems perform better, obviously, than others. It's all based on design, but from what I do know, it, it is a pass-fail test, and you get the ES1 rating. With any roof system, obviously, your edges, it's going to be exposed to the most uplift pressures that there is, your, your perimeters and your corners. So having it tested and, and knowing it's going to perform to certain conditions, you know, obviously means a lot because if the perimeter or the corner of your edge of your roof goes, basically, the rest of the roof is just going to follow suit with it. So that's why they're specifically testing for these flat roof systems at the edges and corners and things like that. So does that mean there's like true engineering with ES1 testing or is it more like a general UL90 approval? 
So I, I think that's kind of a, a difficult question to answer in that there's both options available. Um, you know, you'll have manufacturer specific uh, profiles that they go and test and you might have a building design that might be mildly different. You just got to make sure that even if you move that profile an inch, expand it, contract it an inch from what is actually tested, it's not like a standing seam panel where you know you have a 16 inch wide panel and it's good engineering for 14 inch, it's good engineering for 12 inch. Uh, so it's really manufacturer specific. There's a number of different ways if you're up against an ES1 uh, certified roof that you need to perform on. First and foremost, there's companies out there that sell ES1 certified flashings. Uh, those tend to be more expensive. Um, it's a particularly harder pill to swallow if you're a commercial roofing, well, any roofing contractor that needs to perform on one of these roofs and you have a full sheet metal shop. So there's programs available through SMACNA, programs available through uh, the NRCA. You know, it's good to look into those. One of the other things you could do is work through one of the flat roofing manufacturers. A lot of the flat roofing manufacturers uh, actually have some metal programs and things like that where they can help give you guidance where it might be able to keep the manufacturing in your hands or if it's a really specialty item that needs to be ES1 tested, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's people that have in-house ES1 apparatuses that can help you through that, either fabricating it or testing a flashing for you um, and making you a part of their certification program. So there's a lot of options out there. You know, just keep in mind some of the certification programs that are out there um, can be kind of all-encompassing. So. Um, you might only have a handful of profiles to choose from, and if you have a job that one of those profiles isn't in their selection, just keep in mind you're not going to be performing an ES1 uh, detail. Hey Jeff, how does Sheffield Metals help a flat roofing installer with their metal needs? Well, one of the things that obviously we provide is, you know, we have different gauge metals. We can get, you know, 26 gauge to 22 gauge, so the different thicknesses are available for them. Obviously, if there's a particular color, you know, we stock over 30 colors. Um, so there's a wide variety of metal to choose from. Uh, we have the flat sheets cut, where they, they can uh, take it, slit down and make on their different trim styles on their brakes. Same with the coping caps. So as far as the material goes, um, you know, we should be able to provide any type of uh, thickness or color that they're looking for when it comes to their edge metal systems. Yeah, so you know, a lot of our customers take that ES1 that I mentioned earlier into their own hands. As Jeff mentioned, you don't really see a lot of ES1 stuff in 26 gauge, but you're gonna see some 22 gauge, 24 gauge predominantly. Um, on occasion, in certain areas, you'll see aluminum uh, being specified as well, and you're typically not gonna see anything lighter than an 040 specified on aluminum. Uh, you see people using a lot of our 050, even 063 in these cases. So um, these are things that we can help with. Um, oftentimes, these are situations where the contractor needs to take that ES1 into their own hands, but we can certainly help give guidance on where to do that, how to go about doing it, things like that. Thanks, Adam and Jeff. Hope you guys learned a little bit about metal trim uh, and metal usage in a flat roofing scenario. If you have any questions, comment down below or visit us at SheffieldMetals.com. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.